I'm so pleased and so honored to be joined today by Fiona Gill, Vice President of Customer Success at Anaplan. Fiona, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Jonathan. It's great to be here. And I hope you're playing the part of Zach Galifianakis, because I don't think I could carry that same kind of humor. So that's on you. I don't know if I can <laughs> deadpan it. I don't know. Um, so to begin with, maybe we can have you share a little bit about your responsibilities, your background, and what you do at Anaplan. Yeah, happy to do that, Jonathan. So I lead customer success at Anaplan, and Anaplan is a cloud-native business planning software that enables all parts of an organization that's responsible for planning to be able to connect and collaborate to tie strategy to outcome. And we call that connected planning. So my role and my team's role is to make sure that our customers are getting the most out of the software. And we obviously collaborate very closely with partners in the business like our customer operations and our care team to make sure that end to end we have a great customer experience for our customers. Oh, that's great. It's a very important job, as we were just seeing in the demo. It's so important to so many organizations. And, you know, getting back to some of the comments earlier, um, we live in, you know, very interesting times. That's right. And, I mean, some of our own survey information showed that over the last two, three years, people have been working on average 12 weeks more a year. That's a lot of stress internally, but there's a lot of changes and impacts to the customer expectations externally. So how have you seen in your organization at Anaplan, how have you seen expectations for customers change and evolve over the last couple of years? Well, it has been quite a couple years. I was listening to the radio the other day, listening to COVID-19 and it dawned on me that it's 2022. It feels like that started yesterday and it's been three years, which is amazing. Um, so I think Jennifer set the table really nicely in the keynote talking about the challenges. I think she said work is broken. I think that was one of her quotes. Uh, but when we look at what's going on in the macroeconomic environment, um, obviously there's a lot of workforce challenges. Um, there is cost inflation going on right now. And so from a technology perspective, our customers are really checking, making sure that the software that they're leveraging is giving them that end-to-end -end value. So time to value is incredibly important for software. Um, the other piece it, that we're seeing as a theme is that customers need to be able to, because of the distributed workplace, and I think Sean was talking about that a little bit earlier, they need to be able to collaborate collectively across many different places. And I think COVID-19 really challenged us to think differently about how we work. And software needs to be able to enable our teams and our customers teams to be able to collaborate together to give transparency, visibility, and quite honestly, the speed of innovation, it needs to be now it needs to be fast and so that's what we're seeing and that's why we're really proud of what we're doing at Anaplan. Quite honestly I think PagerDuty and Anaplan, if I could be so bold, would say that um, both our organizations, our software thrives in uncertainty. We help give predictability and um, stronger, uh, stronger compliance, stronger visibility into what's going on so that people can not only react to what's going on but anticipate. Ours is just on the planning side. Yeah, reliability and predictability right. in a world of not so much. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Well, you know, it's hard to talk about customer expectations and the impact on the internal teams when there are disruptions. Um, and it's hard not to talk about trust as a part of that. That's uh, right. We always think about it's easy to lose trust. It's really, really hard to build trust. And from a customer facing organization, I'm just curious how you think about delivering services that build trust. So when uh, Anaplant's one of our core values is customer first. And so when we think about delivering product or service to our customers, it's incredibly important that we have that customer voice in every one of those interactions. Um, Sean was talking about that a little earlier, that you do that as well at PagerDuty. So leveraging the voice of the customer, not only what they're telling you, but what you anticipate that they might need, and we do the same. So we leverage many tools, like our NPS tools, and our product and engineering teams, um, they, they look forward to getting those results in those closed loops to help inform how they innovate on product roadmap. We, 
look at our community websites, we have in-person with our customers through product councils. All of these things are really important to how we build our tools, our, our technology, and then ultimately how we wrap the people and the human side around that. But none of that would be possible without a really stable architecture and infrastructure and the right kind of process and monitoring that goes around that. Because what my team is really focused on is helping to deliver value to our customers. Well, you need to have that foundation in order to be able to have that next level of conversation. So that's an incredibly important element of trust and as you said, it arose so quickly when that's not working well. Yeah, I, I remember a statistic years ago that it would take seven positive experiences to make up for one negative experience. That's right. Um, moving on from trust. Yeah. Um, so as you saw in the demo just a moment ago, we've extended um, our own portfolio to not only focus on you know, those key individuals that get pulled into situations uh, during a major event, such as SREs and developers and IT ops individuals, but also uh, extend our portfolio to the front office, to customer service. And to that end, you know, we've seen disconnects at times with many of our partners, customers, between the back office and the front office. There isn't a gold standard, so to speak, of how that connection. So I'm just curious how you think of the importance between in building that trust and maintaining that trust, that connection from the back office to the front office. Why is it important? What does it mean to you in the organization? Is how does that help? Yeah, so I, I think transparency and visibility is incredibly important. And when um, whatever organization I've been part of, being very close to our product engineering and support teams is incredibly important. Actually, I led support at one point in my career. And that building that kind of human side of trust then enables, obviously, making sure you have that technology wrapper around it so that you can have that speed and transparency. Uh, when I think about the front office, and we, we, we say folks that are in the field, our job is to make sure that customers see value, and then ultimately that drives to more renewals, that drives to growth, and aligning with our customers to have them for a long time. And so those folks in the field are experiencing firsthand with customers if, if, if it's not a good situation, right? And they're having to respond to that real time. So I think having that trust internally and then making sure that um, the folks in the field understand what the, what the vision is for the product and for the, the architecture around the product, but also what are the plans and the support mechanisms around that to make sure that not only can we anticipate if things go wrong, but also react well. At the end of the day, it's technology, and this is what we say to customers. Our job is to give you a great experience and make sure you're getting the full value, particularly now in these difficult times where they're inspecting every dollar. But at the end of the day, we have to make sure that our customers are having that um, kind of stable experience and I think those in the field are the first ones to help manage that when it's not a stable experience. So uh, it's really important. Makes a lot of sense. You know, we were talking yesterday about every customer facing organization is typically reactive. They have That's to right. react in real time. That's right. How amazing would it be if they could be proactive and get ahead of some of these things and communicate proactively? That's that would right. be uh, amazing. That's right, and I think, um, and that's just really on like the table stakes part of the business, right? So if if my team is in the field working with customers, we're we're talking to them about what their goals are and what they want to achieve. Well, when an incident happens, and if you don't have the right support mechanisms around that, um, you're not you don't have those next level conversations with customers, and so you you take uh, the success organization, the care organization, professional services organization, and now you swarm a situation and it distracts from the ability to kind of demonstrate value and growth for your customer. Well, like we always say, you can't have DevOps without CS Ops. That's right, that's right, <laughs> exactly. So maybe to wrap up, um, you know, you've had a, a storied career, very, very uh, uh, a great set of experiences at different organizations, and you've had the opportunity to manage multiple types of teams in the customer-facing teams, whether it's customer success, whether it's professional services, whether it's customer support. I'm just curious how you see all of those teams kind of being impacted um, if there's information that can make their lives better. 
That's right. So um, when I was talking about having to swarm a situation, right? So if if there is an incident, um, and let me actually let me paint this picture for you. So let's pretend that we're sitting with a customer in a success review, and we're talking about the product and how they're going to be leveraging the product to improve their bottom line, and then we're ready to do a demonstration, and that demo does not work. Or imagine that um, you're in a sales situation, <laughs> right? That's another really tough situation. Or perhaps you're in an implementation and you're going through a round of testing before you can get to that next level. Now that pushes back deadlines, right? So um, our professional services organization that helps partner either with our partners or does the implementations themselves, now they're behind on their timelines. Our, our care group is, um, I mean, I have to say they're one of the best that I've worked with, um, but certainly they're, they're not able to be more proactive about utilization of the system and how they're getting the value out of the system. Now they're having to react and calibrate and making sure that they're collaborating with engineering. And my team is not able to really spend the time on the value realization work that they need to do to help build a strong foundation for continued growth with our customers. And so it, when things go right, it affects everybody very well. But when things go wrong, it also affects everybody. And so um, the idea is really just to make sure that we've got really strong collaboration together and we're able to mitigate things before they happen. And Anaplan uses pager duty, and um, we've, we've been able to um, really, as we've brought folks in, more and more folks into the tool, we've been able to manage situations and bring in subject matter experts from around the globe to be able to anticipate and resolve issues. And it's been really powerful for us. Oh, that's great. Well, we appreciate your partnership, appreciate your business, and we're a customer as well of Anaplan. Right. You really help us with our planning, so that's fantastic. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Yeah, Fiona, I really want to thank you for coming today. Happy so to nice here. to have you. Thank you, Jonathan. It was great to be here. Thank you.